probably. Go up and down. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here, bro. We're glad all of you are here. And turn to your neighbor and say, we're glad you're here. Karen, we're glad you're here. Too bad, man. So I'm, I'm going to talk uh, this time and next time about the attributes of a, of a godly cell leader. And cell leaders, one of the things that we need to do is lead by example. This is the one thing that uh, Pastor Goomer from Project Amazon that has been mentoring me for the last few years, he continually teaches me that if you want to teach on something like being evangelistic, he said, you have to be evangelistic. And uh, so we as leaders, we're in the forefront. We're not just telling ourselves what we should be doing, but we're leading. We're showing them by example. Ephesians 6.18. Praying at all times, in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints. So from that, it shows us that um, we're to have a loving lifestyle. When Corey and Julia, uh, when we hired them to come to Canyon City um, to be on staff with us, Jane and I got together with them and they told us that something I said to them uh, really resonate in their hearts. And what I said, I said, when you come on and work for us, you're not being hired as an employee, but it becomes your lifestyle. That ministry is a lifestyle. So when you are cell group leaders, I want you to expand beyond just the night that you meet. And it's more than meeting together on Wednesday night or whatever night. It's a lifestyle. And when we have that kind of an understanding, it translates into so many different things that we can be doing. And what we're also modeling to our people is a personal devotional time that we have to be seeking Jesus personally. We have to be growing in our love and passion for him and in worship. And as they see us growing in Christ, it trickles down to them. But we just can't say do it, but we don't do it. And then we have to be submissive to the leadership of the church. So we are asking uh, the Lord, what are, do I need to learn? What do you need to teach me? And how am I supposed to grow? And when we have that kind of interaction with the Lord, it, it really becomes something that influences the whole group because you, it just comes out of you. you. You teach them about it. You're excited about it. And you grow together. And so to have a healthy family life, which is what cell groups are meant to be, 1 Timothy 3, verse 2, says, Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, Respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? And then if we're single, we're, we're instructed to lead a godly life. In 1 Thessalonians 4.7 says, have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So, again, who we are in Christ is way more important than what we do leading the cell group. It's who we are. It comes from character, doesn't it? And in any kind of endeavor that we're in, it comes from the heart. So we're teaching people to be a disciple, right? 
growing disciples to make disciples. And a follower of Jesus needs to be discipled himself so that that person can disciple another person. This is really critical. And if we are in discipleship, what it helps us to do is to continue to seek wisdom from people that maybe have walked around the block a few more times than us. I don't think any of us are beyond or have grown beyond the uh, benefit of being discipled. We all need it. Now, if anyone here feels like you don't need discipleship, maybe we need to sign up and get discipled by you. <laughs> Did you know something we don't know? But Luke 6.40 says, A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. So obviously, you want to ask someone, if you're not being discipled yet, ask someone that there's something you see in them that you want to be like them. It's the character thing. It's the fruit of their life. You want that person to speak it into you. And so you have to initiate. And again, if you're not being discipled, it's hard for you to talk to people in your cell group. You need discipleship. They may say, who are you being discipled by? What do you say? Oh, I don't need that. We all need it. So I would encourage you, initiate. Find a man or a woman that you respect that and pray about it, approach them and say, would you consider discipling me? It'll bring great fruit in your life. The next thing to sell leaders that we model is we're regular attenders. I know I'm speaking to the choirs with you guys, but regular attenders of not just the cell group, but the weekend services, because so much happens. There's so much potential on the weekend service that if you come to the weekend service kind of prayed up and prepared, what you see is that God gives you kingdom opportunities when you come to church, that you're just not coming to sit in the pew, to sing a few songs, hear a message, and say thank you very much and go home. But you're here to do the work of the kingdom on the weekend too. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another in all the more as you see the day drawing near. We encourage each other by meeting together regularly. So you have to model to your group that unless there's something that comes up, you're, you're making a priority to come to church on Sunday as well as be at the cell group. Um, here's what I encourage you guys to do is when you come to cell group, I mean to church, to be praying for new people. And when you see somebody new, go up to them and meet them. Introduce yourself to them. Find out their stories. Invite them to coffee. And through building relationship with them, that maybe it would eventually lead to you inviting them to your cell group. But it starts with relationship. Initiate. So there are people, admittedly I know, they come here because they want to be incognito. They don't want you talking to them. They just want to sneak in, and then as soon as this, well, probably before service is over, they're running out because they want to be incognito. Give grace to them, pray for them. But there are people coming here, they're alone, they're a new family, they have no relationship within the body. They need people like you to connect with them, to initiate and introduce yourself to them. I think many of you may have heard the story. When Jane and I first moved to Grand Junction the first time, the end of 91, yeah, it was 91, a long time ago for you young guys back there. But were any of you born after 91? <laughs> yeah, 96. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a while ago. We went to a church here, and uh, we walked into the church, and. I'm looking at people, I'm trying to give eye contact, I'm smiling. Not one person said hi to us. It was unbelievable. And so we were told by John and Fran Jessup, we think we've heard this is the best church in Grand Junction. 
So we're driving home and I asked Jane, I said, so what'd you think? And she just busted out crying. She goes, if that's the best here, I'm gonna die here. <laughs> See, there's people coming here hungry, looking for relationship. And what a great time to meet them on a Sunday morning. When you're getting coffee, introduce yourself. Just initiate. See a brother and a sister. You'll be surprised what can happen. You can be like Julie Lowe whenever you see someone that's um, international. She just she just goes right to them, and she is amazing at building relationships with international people. I go for everyone under five three. <laughs> that's my category. So I stick with that. Okay. Then you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. All of this needs to be Holy Spirit led. Galatians 5.22. Now, here's the thing. When, uh, in our circles, we can think of Holy Spirit led as being the power of the Holy Spirit. We do promote that. We do long for that. We pray for that. But here's the thing that makes the most impact is the character that God develops through the gifts the fruit of the Holy Spirit. From Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And... So as we walk with the Spirit, as we pray, God transforms us from the inside out. And that's what becomes the honey that attracts the bee, really, with the lost, is when they start seeing that godly character within us. So um, the fruit of the Spirit is evident in how we love one another. And... Um, Cell group leaders are constantly asking the father what he's doing and following along in touching the lives of those that you're working with and with those you're not working with. Basically, what I'm saying here is when you sign up to become a cell group leader, you're basically signing up to be a pastor. You may not know that. And we may not call you pastor, it doesn't matter because it's not about titles, but it's about who we are. And God's calling you to pastor the flock, to be the people that are there and they see Jesus in us and we lead them to Jesus. And that's the whole discipleship process. That's how life change comes. As we train, become changed, as we become transformed, and as we invest in the lives of others, they change they become transformed. Does that make sense? So, uh, again, think beyond the meeting of the cell group. Think about life. Think about engaging in relationship way beyond just the cell group meeting. That's the way you pastor them. Okay? And we'll get into more of the kind of the... Uh, nuts and bolts of how you do that at a later training. So what I want you to do is at your tables is I want you to share um, how you have seen the fruit of you beginning to think outside of the cell group meeting and what that's translated to maybe a phone call, maybe a text, maybe inviting someone to lunch, something like that, something tangible, practical, and the fruit that you saw from that. And then spend a little bit of time praying for each other, praying for your, your cell groups. All right? So everyone, hold up your right hands. Give me a high five. Boom. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You guys, again, are the core of this church. If we didn't have you, we would not be able to effectively pastor the people in this church. So we anoint you. We bless you as pastors of Canyon View through your cell group ministries.
Thank you guys for what you're doing and who you are. God bless you.